With the 33rd pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Keon Coleman, receiver, Florida State. We want to welcome Florida State wide receiver Keon Coleman to the Buffalo Bills. It took until night two to meet Buffalo's first member of this draft class because they traded out of night one, but we finally got our guy. Welcome into our instant draft reaction. Alongside of Chris Brown, I'm Maddie Glab. Coleman is 6'3", 213 pounds. He was all ACC first team in 2023, and this is a physical, tough wide receiver. He goes up and gets the 50-50 balls. He's got fluidity with the way that he moves in and out of his routes. Multiple highlight reel catches show up on his highlight tape. He makes the hard catches look easy. He had 11 receiving touchdowns last season. He's only had five drops in his career. So Chris, why was Keon Coleman the right pick for the Bills to kick off night two? Well, I think we heard Brandon Bean the other day say he wanted to diversify the Bills passing game. And this guy does that just from a size perspective. This guy has a big basketball background. He was the state MVP in Louisiana as a high school senior with like 31 points a game, 10 rebounds a game. He was a dual sport recruit for Michigan State. He played football and basketball there before he transferred to Florida State and focused on football solely due to injuries. But this is a guy that quite literally plays above the rim. Um, you want to throw it up to this guy, he'll go and get it. And his 38-inch vertical at the combine is an indication of that. Uh, he wasn't supposed to do punt returns at Florida State, but then he got pressed into duty and did a good job. He averaged 12 yards a return. Um, but this is a guy who is very young, and he doesn't have as much time invested in football as most people drafted this high because of his two-sport background. I believe the Bills look at this guy who's only 20 years old. He doesn't turn 21 until May 17th in about three weeks. Young in football, young in reps. I think they see a very high ceiling here with their coaching staff grooming him into a dominant player that does more than just go up and catch the football in contested situations. I think some route running refinement will help him immeasurably. Um, and this guy, look, people are going to say, ah, he only ran a 4-6-1. If you look at his combine workout and the next-gen stats, when he ran the gauntlet drill where they catch the football from both sides and run across the field, he ran it faster than anyone in his receiver group, including guys like Troy Franklin and others. When he ran the routes in the route portion of the workout, he was in the top four, top three in terms of miles per hour than any of the players in his receiver group, which again included, included Troy Franklin, included Xavier Leggett and a couple of others. The guy plays faster than he times. Um, are there things that he needs to work on? Yes. Route running refinement sharpening his routes. Um, he rounds some things off sometimes. So I think there are elements of his game that certainly can be improved. But for a guy that's young in football, all the physical tools are there. And this is what we usually see, Maddie. Early in the draft, Brandon Bean drafts elite physical traits. This guy has them. He does look fast on tape. When he's on the field, he plays fast. He has the ability to add a really fun wrinkle to this offense. I can't wait to see how him and Josh Allen gel together. And I'm excited to see how he refines his skills, like you said, as a technician learning from wide receivers coach Adam Henry. All right, general manager Brandon Bean is addressing the media right now, so let's get over to Bean. We had, we had guys that we were – he, he was in the group that we had, and we were just making sure we didn't go too far. So he was – we had a group of guys that we, we liked, and, and uh, we're very excited to get him. When you say group, These guys, Brandon, are you referring to uh, – Not just receivers. Yeah, not just receivers. Okay, but um, that being said, there, are, there were a lot of receivers who projected in that maybe late first, early second area. Yeah. What made Keon stand out for you guys? Yeah, just um, big physical size, plays above the rim – uh, for a big guy, drops his weight. Um, I was at his season opener this year against LSU, and this guy's, you know, I knew who he was. He transferred from Michigan State, but hadn't really seen him in person. And pregame, during the game, like he's catching punts. You don't really see a guy that's 6'3 plus that, you know, usually those are smaller guys that can do that. So you saw his athletic ability. A lot of times, bigger guys have some stiffness. Um, he really drops his weight top of the route and gets separation. Some guys, due to their stiffness, 
they struggle to, you know, to separate from the DBs. He does a great job there, uses body position, obviously wingspan, uh, contested catches, all those things. He's got some he's got some rack ability too. I think you go to that game, I think he caught like a forty yard uh, little either bang eight or, or like a slant or something, made a guy miss, took it the rest of the way. So he's not just a big guy that catches the ball and goes down like he can make plays, uh, you know, with his feet. This is, when, when you have a guy who comes in and, and produces in his first year in the system, does that get your attention that you'll be able to pick up what you guys do quickly? Yeah, I mean, he. Uh, you're talking about a guy who transferred to a school that had a lot of expectations and, you know, he, he answered everything I think they were looking for and then some. And, you know, that team, you know, if they don't lose their quarterback, they're probably in the playoffs. Um, you know, in, in the final four teams, they unfortunately lost him and, and it cost them. But he made a lot of big plays. Um, I know the Clemson game made an unbelievable catch. The, I think Syracuse game, he made just an amazing catch. Like you can see his above the rim uh, plays. And, you know, we get some freelance plays with Josh's athletic ability. He's a guy that's going to be able to, he's got a great feel and instinctual feel. I think some of that comes from even his basketball background. It's, this guy's not just like a high school basketball player. Like he could have played uh, major college hoops. So that shows you his his athletic ability. You know, and, and we like guys that play multiple sports. He's 20 years old. He'll be 21. Uh, so still an ascending talent. And you know, he's. I would say he's a hungry dude. He's he's gonna talk a little bit. You guys will enjoy him. Like uh, you know, we we're probably gonna have, Derek Boyko is gonna have his work cut out for him probably. Uh, but he's he's a confident kid. Uh, he's a dog, you know, however you want to say it. Um, he'll bring some attitude and energy to our room, but he loves ball. Like, he's he's all about ball. And, you know, we had him here for a 30 visit, and he just – he loves, you know, Josh Allen, and, and you could tell he, 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 he really wanted this to work out here. What do you think of the 4 6 one time? Uh, and second question is uh, – how do you feel he handles press coverage? Uh, you know, guys are gonna. Um, I'm gonna start with the press. Really good release um, of of the bigger guys. We thought his release was was about as good as as any. Um, he's he, and I think that comes from the basketball. Some of the guys were a little stiffer and, and they struggled. You know, is he gonna run away from from people? Probably not. That's probably not his number one strength. Um, I think his play speed is definitely faster than you know we. We're able to get access to the GPS times. You feel the play speed. I would say his play speed's closer to four five, um, not a four four, but uh, plenty fast. The separation ability, the ability to drop his weight. Um, he can can torque again. You go back to some of the stiffer guys. They struggle on the back shoulder. You know, getting around easy for him. You see some of those plays that he made in college. Um, so no, I'm not. You know, would you love him to be four four? I think if he was true game speed four four. He wouldn't have been available. How much? Brandon, of, you, uh, 33 is a popular spot for trades. You mentioned last night that you had even had some calls. Did anything material get close in your mind? Not close. Uh, definitely conversations, but no one. Um, our board was was getting thin, you know, as we went down, and and we just didn't want to take a chance. If we could have gone back one or something like that, and still, you know, thought we could have got Keon, maybe. Um, I've done that before, but didn't want to chance it at this point. How important was it to get get get, on, get one on the board after after your maneuvers yesterday, just to get get on the board today? Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, you know, everyone in the draft room kind of knew without me saying uh, who we wanted today. You know, they they could they see the board. They don't have to. Uh, know what's coming next. So it was kind of unspoken. You know, you could feel the energy in the cafeteria at dinner um, tonight. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people got to know Keon, you know, in the 30 visit, we passed these guys around and and talking about his energy. When we break draft meetings, a lot of times they're already in there in the calf. We kind of split them up when they're going to talk to us. And, and uh, he's the first guy you heard. And we had some other receivers in that day. And, and so uh, he, he's a... He's got a lot of bravado to him, uh, personality, and, and I think you guys will enjoy him. You kind of teased. You, you kind of teased a couple of weeks ago about getting a bigger, you know, wide receiver with catch radius. And this offense is going 20 to 20 with anybody. But how much did the decision to bring Keon Coleman in, as far as a red zone threat, did yeah. that make that move for you? Yeah, I think this gives us 
another guy down there to, you know, you, you never, when you get down there, you want to make sure you're getting, you know, six, seven instead of kicking field goals. And so this gives us another guy for that Josh can trust, even, even if he is covered, um, to throw him a ball, whether it's back shoulder, whether it's, you know, you know, a fade in the back of the end zone. You know, there are, if you look at his tape, you'll see all of those throws at some point. And, you know, he makes his fair share. There, I think there's even a couple he probably would have wanted to make this year um, that he didn't. But if you look even back to Michigan State, uh, he's a natural, you know, play above the rim basketball type player. Do you view him just as an outside guy or a guy that's versatile inside and outside? He can actually play some inside. You know, I think position one, you know, I think Joe will probably line him up as, as just a standard X receiver on the outside. But uh, I do think because of his shiftiness inside, he can get off press in there and, you know, get up the middle, be a, kind of a big body, you know, if, if Joe wants to use him like that. What about, return, more, please? what about as a return man? He did return the punts last year. Yeah, we'll see. He can do it. Uh, he, you know, he, he called him pretty easy. I cannot remember if, if he had any muffs or not right off the top of my head. But, uh, f- you know, you don't see many guys, you know, 6'3", that uh, can naturally catch it. You can, see, you can see his athletic ability. It makes sense, you know, a multi-sport athlete. You know, just be 21 and this belief or, you know, in the global sense of football that rookie receivers generally can't be relied upon to be a huge impact, yeah. historically speaking. What are your expectations in that regard? Oh, he's probably going to have 150 catches, yeah, 2,000 yards. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I think he'll, you know, we'll, we'll bring him along. He'll have to learn the offense. We'll see how many spots. Can he just learn the X? Can he learn multiple spots to, you know, that may not be right away, but he'll help us a lot. He's going to, you know, he's a big body on when teams, when we want to lean on him and, and, and run the ball too. Um, but, you know, I think it'll be one of those things. How quick can he, can he get everything? Him and Josh get on the same page. I know Josh is, is, is going to be super excited uh, to get him and, and, um, I know Keon is, is excited to be here. So, you know, stat-wise, I don't know, but I think he'll help us. I'll get you. Keep it up. That was Bills general manager Brandon Bean talking about his newest wide receiver, Keon Coleman. He described him as big, physical, and someone who plays above the rim. We would now like to welcome NFL Films senior producer Greg Cosell into the conversation. And Greg, Keon Coleman is someone that we talked about and knew was available for night two. The Bills decide to stick and pick at number 33. Keon Coleman is their guy. What do you believe is his greatest gift? Well, I think so, you start with size. And I think the, one of the points Brandon Bean made, which I think is really important because they don't have this receiver, is in today's NFL, you need that boundary X. He mentioned that because a lot of teams, that, and, and every team does, the Bills will do it, line up in what we call three-by-one sets, and you need that single receiver to the short side of the field to be someone who can win. And you can win multiple ways. You can win by separating. You can win by going above the rim, making contested catches. Uh, clearly, Coleman can do that at 6'3". He's very smooth. He's not sudden. Most guys 6'3 aren't sudden and explosive in the way they move, but he's very smooth. He's very fluid. Um, you know, he referred to that opener against LSU when he caught that slant route. I, I, as soon as he said it, I, I saw it right in my mind because, you know, I've watched so much tape of these guys. Um, and that's what he's referring to. He caught a slant or a glance route, and he was able to take it to the house. And that's what you're also looking for, because think of what the Bills did last year once um, uh, Joe Brady became the O.C., how many short passes they threw that required more run after catch. And I think that is a strength of his game. He's a big guy. Um, Like I said, he's not necessarily going to just run away from people, but he's big and he does have a little bit of that looseness to him. Um, You know, he's he's not tight. He's not a big, tight guy. He's a loose guy. and I think one of the things that really stood out for a lot of people, that 4-6-1 was sort of mitigated by, number one, his tape, and number two, that, um, that drill at the Combine, that um, uh, Brownie, I think drill, you yeah. mentioned, um, the gauntlet drill, where he was the fastest. And I was in the stadium, and he looked fast doing it. Also looked like he had soft hands, Greg. Um, yep. I know his on-target catch percentage was 91% for his college career, which is a good number considering how many contested balls that he had. Um, what, what stands out to you about his hands? That's question one. 
And then question yeah. two is a comp for him that I've seen a lot has been Cortland mm, Sutton. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that's a fair comparison? Um, I think that his hands are good, number one. I don't think there's a problem with his hands. I think he's a little smoother than Cortland Sutton. You know, it's been a while since I've seen Cortland Sutton, obviously, Brownie. Um, I remember when he came out. Um, I think this guy's just a little smoother. Here's the gauntlet drill we were speaking about. Yeah. Uh, this guy just, to me, is, is just the, the way he moves. There's a little more fluidity to his movement. So, uh, you know, he was a guy that, as I watched him, I kept going back and forth on him. And when I say back and forth, I don't mean I didn't think he was any good. Back and forth on whether he thought he was really big-time prospect or just a good prospect. And, you know, sometimes that happens when I watch guys. I just I, I come away and I'm just not sure because they're all projections. And, and as Brandon Bean said, this kid's young. So he's, you know, and, and I think you have to be a little careful. And I think Brandon Bean sort of acknowledged that, yes, Buffalo fans want this guy to be a big factor year one. Sometimes with receivers, that doesn't happen. And, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be a really good player. You know, we don't know how that's going to play out. Um, but this kid is, I mean, you can almost see him here. There's a smoothness to him. We're watching the combine drills, obviously. He's, you can see how big he is, just the body type, but there's a smoothness to him. Like even right there, that little quickness as, as the, he separated there. Um, this was a really good pick because they didn't have this kind of receiver. Now, when I say it's a good pick, none of us know, you know, he could be great. He could not be great. We don't know that. But in terms of the kind of receiver they need, it's a really good pick. Yeah. I want to expand upon the fact that he's 20 years old, set to turn 21 on May 17th. So here in just a few short weeks, why is it important to get a young wide receiver in the NFL, specifically at that position? Well, Maddie, I'm not sure you know, that there's a big difference, let's say, between 20 or 21 or 22. I mean, look, the guy's young. Um, all these guys are young. Um, so... You know, he's got, look, he, he came from Michigan State the year prior to, to Florida State. Michigan State had a really bad offense. And I remember watching him, um, not really breaking him down in detail, because I think that's the year that Reed came out, the uh, Green Bay wide receiver. And I remember studying him, noticing Coleman. And then I started to hear a lot about him. And, of course, I did him in detail this year. I didn't realize he was that young. But. So he's, you know, he's not played a ton of football and now he's going to the NFL. Uh, so, you know, it could take a little time. But, you know, uh, look, we, none of us have any reason to doubt Brandon Bean when he talks about the kid and that he's a dog and that he wants it. You know, you, you hope that that's true with everybody you draft. But if that's the case, um, you know, and I also think with, with Josh Allen, big receivers are, are a good thing. Uh, you know, I think that when Josh moves, which he's, of course, going to do, you know, you're going to have throws where your receivers have to go get the ball. And, you know, you got a guy that's 6'3", and he can go up and get it. I mean, obviously, everybody's familiar with that Syracuse catch where he caught the ball like it was a rubber ball, you know. And he made a couple of other catches like that as well during the season. Yeah. I can't wait to see how Josh Allen and Keon Coleman pair up. Greg, thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for your expertise. We appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Yep. Here's another fun fact, Maddie. His cousin is C.D. Lamb. How about that? Boom. Uh, okay. So I like that. Got a guy that. in the league that, you know, maybe he could call and lean on and say, what should I expect in my rookie year? That kind of thing. And he's going to get some honest advice from a family member. So, you know, you got that going for you. And just to give you an idea on how interested they were in Keon Coleman, they not only had him here on a, on a pre-draft 30 visit. I actually had a chance to shake his hand. I think you got to meet him too, didn't mm -hmm. you, when he came yep. through? Um, but they also met with him at the Combine. So they've done their due diligence in sitting down with him. Uh, they feel that he's got kind of a bubbly personality. He'll bring some energy to the room. Some of his teammates at Florida State said never met him on a day where he was down. The guy is always up, positive. So that's how you can see him kind of fitting in to the quote-unquote Bill's DNA. Coaches say he loves to work. Teammates say he has so much energy. Bean described him as someone who's confident, has that dog in him. Well, let's meet the guy. Let's meet this confident guy. Keon Coleman addressing the media right now. Let's send it over to Coleman. I went up there for my 30, and it just was great. It was a great connection. You know, uh, we love what we were doing on the board together. And, you know, we got a great feel for each other, and, you know, 
think that ultimately played into the decision. Brandon Bean just spoke. He said that you you love Josh Allen. You know who Josh Allen is, all about him. Can you kind of tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, I've been a fan of his game, man. Since watching him at Wyoming, I didn't even know who he was, but you know, I don't know how a Wyoming game came on my TV screen down south, but uh, man, he could really throw the ball. He could spin it. You know, he has pretty much everything you want out of a quarterback. And if it, everything he breaks down, he can continue to make the play, keep it alive. So, man, he's just a great, a great guy on top of all of that. You know, from what I, you know, the short things I, I, I can see, the little things I can see. But, you know, I just love to play with him, you know. Thank you, Keon. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Hi, Keon. Matt Bovey here with Channel 7 in Buffalo. Congratulations. Welcome to Buffalo. Thank you so much. I'm proud to be there. So when you say that it felt like there was a lot of mutual interest and Brandon Dean says, hey, that, you know, we know that this is a guy who kind of does what we want. Why do you think you're a good fit here? I mean, I'm a hard, I'm a, I'm a hard worker. I work hard and, you know, I don't I don't like to be given anything. I like to work for everything I'm going to get and I like to earn it because it's special that way. And, you know, they I feel like they I'm a guy that can play the X. Uh, I can move around on the offense and things like that. You know, I, think I can pick up information fairly quickly. And, you know, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a great guy, I think, outside of just a football player. So, you know, I fit what they want. You know, a guy that's been coming in and just, you know, work hard, do what you do and be held accountable. And, uh, for, you know, ultimately do what they drafted you to do, make some plays and, you know, get on that field as much as you can and then have a great relationship with uh, Josh Allen. Awesome. Thanks, Keon. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Hi, Keon. John Warrell with the Associated Press. How you doing? Good. Um, what did you learn or how important was it to have the season that you had, you know, after leaving Michigan State and, and doing what you did in Florida State? You say, hey, can you say that again? How important was it to have the season that you had at Florida State, you know, in just your first year there? I mean, I think it showed a lot. You know, I want to put myself to the task of, you know, changing, uh, changing sceneries and, you know, kind of putting myself through this process. Like that I'm going through now, having to go to a new team and went over my locker room, my receiver room, learn my playbook, uh, come there with whatever expectations there is and, you know, got to ultimately perform. So I tried to put myself through that challenge before I really had to. So I think it was pivotal, you know, being able to pick up the information, you know, a totally different playbook, a uh, totally different scheme and system, a bunch of guys that I have never talked to, spoken to, watched play. So it was fun, you know, I got to, you know, really – capitalized on that experience and ultimately played a bunch of great guys, which is, you know, ultimately the plan that I want to win, so we won. So it was it was it was big. Last thing from me, and, and I don't want to place any extra pressure on you, but you know, you are the receiver that joins the Bills after the team trades Stephon Diggs. They're not asking you to be Diggs, but what are your expectations walking into this onto this team right now on a on a unit that lost Diggs and Gabe Davis? I'm really just trying to come in and, you know, work hard to establish myself as a guy they can trust. You know, one of them, my locker room, man, and then let the on the field stuff take care of itself. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, hey, Keon, Alex Brasky, Batavia Daily News. Congratulations. Welcome to Buffalo. Thank you so much. What do you know about the team, the organization, the city of Buffalo, the fan base uh, from the outside looking in? What's your perspective coming in here, joining this franchise? For one, great fan base. Probably, I say the best in the league. Great fan base. There's a lot of football up there. So people love the, the game of football. Uh, you know, they're very hands-on. They they love their players, man. And then outside of that, just the organization, you know, what, they, what they're looking for. They're looking for humble guys ready to come in and work and get some wins. Now, joining this offense, what do you see from this offense that you think can fit your skill set? And do you have any past experience with Joe Brady in terms of conversations beyond the – the visit that you had? Uh, nah, you know, uh, I'll start with the uh, Coach Brady thing. We we spoke at the formal, and then, you know, we spoke again when we was at the 30, and we spent a lot of time together. But, you know, he was down at LSU, I think, earlier on in my career, like high school. But, you know, he ended up leaving around the time they started recruiting me. So it was, you know, just missed him. But, you know, I knew a lot about him. I knew what he was about. Uh, I loved the offenses that he ran. And, you know, I'm just a big fan of him. You know, he, he likes to get the ball. In the, in the hands of his playmakers, and then he has a quarterback that can. It's like a. It's like having a guy with a space jam. He can do everything. So it's like it just makes his job even easier. And you know now I'm just hoping to come in there and work and be the guy that he can he can rely on to go out there and catch the ball from Josh. All right. Thanks. Welcome to Buffalo. Thanks. Appreciate you.
King Aaron Coleman, the Waffle House up, King, man? Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yeah, you know, we spoke at uh, the Combine and we talked about some of the parts of your game, but what is the biggest part of your game that you believe that can help this offense right away? Uh, be, being able to play big and play small, just adding some versatility, uh, you know, and then how hard of a work I am and catch the ball and things of that nature and just be able to make plays all over the field. I think I can just bring him another reliable target on top of KJ Ham and the guys that they already have there. Now, in your conversation, speaking with offensive coordinator Joe Brady, what did he specify what your role will specifically be? Hmm, we'll keep that, you know, once I learn to play, but we'll, we'll discuss that another time. <laughs> Welcome to Buffalo, my guy. We'll find a I Waffle House for you. All right, bet. We can build one. <laughs> How's it going, Keon? Welcome to Buffalo. I appreciate you. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your uh, basketball ability. It's something that Brandon Bean mentioned, your above-the-rim ability and how playing with Josh Allen, there's going to be some freelance opportunities. How much pride do you take in being a guy that when that ball goes up there and it's a 50-50 ball, you're going to come down with it? And how would you characterize the way that playing basketball has impacted your ability and your growth as a wide receiver? I think having that ability to be able to, be able to go up there with the confidence that you're going to come down with the ball every time is a major plus. Especially when you have a quarterback with the arm he has and the, the ball placement he has, it's, it's going to be kind of like pitch and catch. So I think I love that uh, I was able to hone in on that ability, you know, with the gift guy gave me and, uh, you know, put some more hard work into it. And then after that, uh, basketball translated a lot, man. You know, side to side movement, lateral movement, vertical jumping, speed, quick first step, and things of that nature help all with the game of football. And then having firm hands, you better go up and have point a ball, or come across the middle, you know, grab a ball. It's, it's all the same thing. I can't hear you. Hold up. I can't hear you. Then one other question for me, and it goes back to a question that John asked you earlier. With Diggs and Davis gone, there is an opportunity here in Buffalo for targets. How do you go about maybe viewing that as a challenge and, and as an opportunity for you while not placing the pressure on yourself to feel like you have to fill those shoes right away? Uh, just going in there and working hard, man. Learning my playbook. Uh... You know, winning over my room and showing that I'm here to to do my job, work hard, and be accountable, and be uh, you know, be where I need to be on the field and off the field. So that's gonna earn my trust to them, and that's gonna also earn the trust of my quarterback. And then you know, also getting working with him, he's gonna earn the trust. We're gonna earn the trust of each other the way he can be able to give me the ball and trust that I'm gonna do what I need to do with it. Thank. You. I still couldn't hear. Him. Hey, Keon, Catherine Fitzgerald from the Buffalo News. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Of course. I um, was just wondering, what was today like for you, knowing that there was so much mutual interest for the Bills, but having to wait all day just like for them to even be on the clock? Man, I was just grateful, man. You know, it could be a lot of mutual interest, but, you know, they ultimately have to pull the trigger and, you know, establish it as their guy that they want to come draft. And I was confident in it, but, you know, you never can be too sure. So I was just waiting and waiting. And you know, I was just, you know, really just thankful. By the grace of God, I was able to even be, able to have my name in the draft. So that's all I was waiting for. Whenever my opportunity was going to come, just be able to be ready to work hard and get to work. Who all were you watching with? Um, all of my family, my agent, uh, my mentor, my mom, my my, uh, my uh, uncles, my grandmother, and my brothers and sisters, and then nieces, my nieces and nephews. And then the rest of my family, they were around. Awesome. Thanks and congrats. Appreciate you so much. Hey, Keon, uh, Jenna Cottrell from ABC Rochester. Congratulations. I, I just had one question for you in terms of we know your you know ability for big catches, your strength, the big body, all that stuff. But what do you say to people who say you don't quite have enough speed? I've never been caught. You know, I don't think I've ever been just caught from behind. Or I don't think I've ever had the chance to not be able to run by somebody. I think, well, more more so than that, I don't think it's not one DB that ever just sat when I was running at him. So, I mean, that pretty much tells you all you need to know. The guys that are saying about the speed, they're not the guys on the field. So, it's really just, you know, I mean, your opinions, you know, they are opinions for a reason. It is what it is. And then one uh, last question, just what has this moment been like for you? There's so much anticipation for the draft. And then, what you know, what does it feel like having this moment come to fruition? Man, it's just been great. You know, it's been a dream come true. You know, been been chasing this dream since I, you know, came out the womb, and you know, just being able to be 
hear about a great guy, you know, thanks to him, my dream came true today. And I'm just ready to be a Buffalo Bill and get to work. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's all we got. Appreciate the time, Keon. Safe travels, and we will see you tomorrow. All right. Appreciate you. Have a great day. That was Buffalo's newest wide receiver, Keon Coleman, and you can kind of see that personality come out, that confidence in him. <laughs> he was asked about his speed, that 4'6", 140, not being as fast as some other guys who got drafted last night. He said, you know what? I've never been caught. I love that out of our new wide receiver. He also seems very excited to be paired with Josh Allen. He called Josh Allen like a guy in Space Jam. He can do everything. Chris, what did you love most about Keon Coleman's press conference? Yeah, I mean, you can tell that there's an air of confidence there, but it's not arrogance. You know, um, sometimes that can rub people the wrong way. I just think he's confident in the abilities that he has. Um, and when you think that he did it in two different sports, I think you can kind of understand why. This, he's probably been told he's been great since he's about age 12. And that can get into people's heads sometimes where they think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. It hasn't changed him, I don't think, in a negative way. Because if it did, I don't know if he'd be in a Bills uniform. So you got to credit his family and his upbringing for that. And the one thing that I forgot to mention, Maddie, regarding his touchdown production. So he had 19 career touchdowns right. in college, and he did it on 115 receptions. One of every six catches went for a touchdown in college for Keon Cole. That's a pretty good stat right there. We also heard from Brandon Bean. He discussed the pick and why they believed Coleman is going to be the right fit for this Bills offense. Did anything stand out to you about Brandon Bean's press conference? Yeah, I mean, kind of what we touched on at the open there, how this is a guy that's young in football. And so I think what makes him attractive, the elite physical traits are there to be groomed and grown in a 20-year-old player who I think they see a very, very high ceiling for. I think where he is now is at a place where he can contribute and help this team right away and line up as an X receiver. I think with the way Joe Brady has introduced the running game into this offense, this is certainly a guy that has evidence on tape that he can block in the run game, and he does it willingly. But I, I, I think the ultimate prize here for them is I think they see a big growth potential in him as a player so what you see in year one, I think, will only be scratching the surface of where they feel he can take his game as long as he applies himself and as long as Adam Henry brings him along and develops him to his utmost abilities. They believe there's big potential. They also trust their coaching staff, Joe Brady, Adam Henry, and Josh Allen to get that out of him. He's a big-bodied wide receiver, a bully, somebody who catches the 50-50 balls. It is going to be exciting to see him in blue and red this season. We want to let you guys know that we're going to be live after the Bills' next pick. That's number 60. They also have a third-round pick tonight as well. We will be live after that as well. And we want to remind you to tune in to rounds four through seven of the NFL Draft tomorrow starting at 12 o'clock Eastern on NFL Network, ESPN, and ABC. Buffalo Bills, you know your guy now. Keon Coleman, the newest wide receiver of Buffalo. Very, very exciting. We'll be back soon enough with Buffalo's next pick. See you guys soon.